How good and how precious it is when brethren dwell together. It is like the oil that ran down the beard of Aaron, even into his skirts. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, and just serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. Our scripture this morning. I would like to read uh, Psalms 150, a psalm of praise that just says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the pastry and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. For our God is an awesome God. Our God is a great God. Our God is a mighty God, and we'll give him thanks and praise for just being here this morning. Praise ye the Lord. Father God, we come this morning, first of all, Lord, to always to lift you up, always to give you praise, always to magnify you. Father, we couldn't do anything without you. We thank you, Lord, that you have breathed upon all of us and given us the breath of life. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our presence. Oh, you are indeed the true worship leader. Welcome, welcome in this place this morning. Not only here, but we're asking you to go across the airways. We're asking you to bless those that are out in uh, TV land and on, uh, uh, on each and every one that we have been using, our conference calls our YouTube, our Facebook. Oh, Father God, we thank you for all these things that you have given us, Father God, during this time and during this season, Lord, until we can all come back together in the strength and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless everyone today, our pastor who has a word from you today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for revival, Lord. Let us know that you're always with us, Lord, even until the end of the ages, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our blessed musicians, Lord. We thank you for them this morning and the songs of Zion that they will bring forth. We thank you for those that are in our room, Father God. Oh, Father God, that helping 
with all the equipment and everything, Lord. We bless you for them, Lord, that they're able to continue to come out and serve, Lord, not only here in the sanctuary, but for those, Lord, that are on the airwaves, Lord. Oh, Father God, we thank you this morning. We bless you for your word, Lord. Oh, Lord, we lift our hands to you, Lord. We say glory, hallelujah. We say amen, honor, and power to the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is one. Oh, Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, as we are ready now to hear, Lord, from the psalmstress and to hear our pastor, Lord. We, Lord, we bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. somebody today. I have no reason to fear. Maybe you say that when you come up against the obstacles, you're probably going to get this week, but just remember, you have no reason to what? And that's even if that's for just one person this morning, you have no reason to fear. Say it with me. I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. I have no reason, no reason, no reason, no reason, reason, no reason, no reason. I have no reason to fear. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the glory, give him the praise. Woke me up this morning, got me on my way. Give him the glory, give him the glory, give him the glory, give him the praise. Oh, give him the glory, give him the praise.
this morning. Start me on my way. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning to each and every one of you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time with my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. So good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. These are your announcements for October the 16th, 2022. This is the third Sunday. This is our communion Sunday. So uh, you still have time to gather your crackers, or your slice of bread or your uh, Welch's grape juice, whatever you decide to celebrate and commemorate communion with us today. Uh, you may gather those at this time. Amen. So it is the third Sunday, and we do uh, recognize and we do remember the sacrifice Jesus Christ made by giving himself as a uh, sacrifice for the sins of the world. Amen. Amen. On Sunday, we have our CMCC Children's Sunday School. It has started, so please sign up on the website. I was a bit able to tune in on last week. It was a tremendous blessing to see what the children are learning inside our church and affiliated with our church. So please join in, uh, send your grandchildren or your children that they may come in and be blessed by the Sunday School lesson. What's up, y'all? This is Sister Gloriana, and it is time to announce that Children's Sunday School is back. I will be the wonderful teacher here for all of our babies as they learn how to praise the Lord, how to lift him up, and how to be appreciative of the blessings they have received. That's right, y'all. I cannot wait to see your babies here on Sunday. So please check out this website to get them all signed up, and we will see you here at 9.30, 8.30 Central Standard Time, ready to praise our living King. Thank you all, and I can't wait to see you there. Amen. The Lions Club is taking don uh, glasses donation. These are prescription glasses on behalf of our outreach ministry. If you have some old prescription glasses in your car, under the seat, in the window ledge, or anywhere you may have them, amen. I know you have some old glasses because from time to time, if you ever go to the eye doctor on a regular basis, you know your prescriptions change. Amen. So instead of discarding or throwing away those old glasses, someone can need those glasses. So we just ask that you give them uh, to the outreach ministry. There is a box where you can drop off uh, these. I have a pair I'm going to give to myself uh, uh, today. Amen. They had them, I found them in the drawer of my office. <laughs> so it's time to give those away. Amen. I'm not going to wear them again so someone else can be blessed with those glasses. Amen. This is Clergy Appreciation Month, so uh, on behalf of the Pastor Sherwood Walker at the Craig Moore Community Church, to all clergy around the world in our country, uh, we appreciate you and we thank you for your diligent service in serving the Lord as you serve the Lord's people. To the many, many wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Craig Moore Community Church uh, associate ministers, I do salute you on today. You're doing a fantastic job. On behalf of your pastor, I greatly appreciate all that you do, all that you are, your constant attendance, your teaching, and your attention to detail. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again. It is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, if you've ever been affected by or know someone who's been affected by breast cancer, this is the Awareness Month. Uh, ladies, get your screenings, have your mammograms, do your self-examinations, because uh, it is very important that you examine yourself and also have the doctor examine you as well. Amen. So you'll be aware that breast cancer uh, does happen, it does occur, and it can affect you uh, in one way or another. So please, ladies, take care of yourselves. Amen. Also, uh, men as well, if you notice a lump in your chest, because men, I discovered, had a co-worker who passed away because the initial cancer diagnosis was he had breast cancer. So for men, check your chest as well. Amen. Amen. If you know anyone who's in the penal system, uh, let the outreach ministry add their names to the mailing list. We want to give them documentation. Uh, those who are incarcerated, if you know anyone, please give uh, their names to a member of the outreach ministry so we can reach out to them and include them on their mailing list. Amen. Amen. 
Well, the Jew celebration is going to be November the 19th. Uh, we want to celebrate those who are 75 years and over. Look at that great, beautiful flyer. Amen. With all the Jews on it. If you are 75 years of age or older, we want to honor you and recognize you on November the 19th at 2 p.m. Amen. So we love having you. You're a vital part of the church. And just like clergy, we could not have gotten this far without your donations, without your time, and without God leading you to this place. So we salute you on today, as well as in November, for the contributions that you've made to the Craig Memorial Community Church. The food bank will be here every fourth Friday. The fourth Friday is coming up. So that we ask that you, uh, if you know anyone who's in need of free food items, please invite them to come down to the church so we can give these free food items away. The food bank will be here. Uh, if I know most of us have probably never gone without a meal or maybe because you forgot to eat, you fasted or something like that, you know what it is to be hungry. But not hungry in the sense that you have nothing to eat. We have no choice of what we might want to eat, but we can't say that we have nothing to eat. But if you do or you do fit into this category, please come down on the fourth Friday of the month so you can be blessed with free food items. The praise team is still in need of members. If you'd like to participate in the praise team, please contact Sister Brenda Swanson and let her know that you want to be a member of the praise team. Well, Craig Moore is inviting Lottie Dottie and everybody. We like to see you here in the sanctuary. We like to see you here worshiping online as well. If you are online, if you are on Zoom and you can see me, you can hear me, uh, congratulations and thank you for joining. Also, share these numbers with others so that they might hear our services. They may partake in our service. Anyone and you know someone who does not have a church home, you know someone who's unsaved, just give them that gentle invitation because you never know what impact on their life it may have. The hour of power, now half hour of power, is on Wednesday nights and we have our prayer service. We are now also in our Bible study in the book of Luke. We are now uh, in chapter number 21. Amen. Uh, we're hastening toward the end here where we may be enlightened and, and uh, may learn more about the word of God for the people of God. And it's an interesting thing to note as I move on, hasten on to the end of the announcements. It's an interesting thing to note what things the Bible actually covers that you did not know it covered at all. There are some small items, certain little scriptures, maybe one little passage of scripture where we study it together and we like, wait a minute, that's interesting. So it's always the Bible is sharper than any two edged sword. and It's always a living document that can bless you, even with something you may have skimmed over and read before. So join us on Wednesday night at 730. We have our Sunday church school at 930 a.m. So please tune in. You can tune in remotely or you can be here in the sanctuary. We offer two options. So there's no excuse for not being in Sunday school. Amen. So with that, we uh, if you are able to attend here, we have very capable teachers to be a blessing to you. Friday night is our intercessory prayer. You can join us. They pray for our church, our community, and our country. And as you know, with the crazy things that are happening now, I'm so grateful for God's grace and mercy that spares our lives at the grocery store, at the gas station, and wherever we go, God is covering us and protecting us in this crazy world. And we're so very glad that he does. And it's great even not only to be covered, but to be covered in prayer. Amen. That the people of God are praying for you. Some names are listed on the, on the screen here. These are those who you need to remember in prayer. Uh, as I always say every week, if you can't jot their names down, if you can't have that great photographic memory, you can say, Lord, whoever is on the prayer list, whatever they stand in need of, God intervene on their behalf. Do what only you can do. Amen. Now, how, much you, how might you contribute to the Craig Moore Community Church in your tithes and offerings? The Women's Day contribution and church and contributions are still being accepted. You can do cash app. You can also mail your checks, contributions. If you're here, you can drop your contributions in the box, or you can call Brother Fred Smith to pay by your debit card. So we have these options. We ask that you take advantage of them. And please give as God has given to you. 
This wonderful AV ministry that operates not only on Sunday, but also on special events needs some volunteers. If you would like to participate, please call the church office. There is room for you. Amen. Now, uh, we just got out of our revival and something that Pastor Haley said that's resonated with me even today, that revival started on Friday night. Even though the worship services has ended, revival does start at the end of revival. So now we're looking for a change in ourselves. We're looking for God to do something marvelous and mighty. And the great thing about revival is in our revival services, if you go to YouTube, you can still watch it over and over again. Amen. So we're so very grateful to Pastor Haley. He said, and he complimented you. He said that this was a good church to preach in because he felt the spirit of reception to the word of God. And we're so very glad that God makes us receptive to hearing his word. Amen. But not being a hearer only, but a doer as well. Amen. So Pastor Haley, I'm glad I met his acquaintance. He's a great fellow, a great preacher and teacher of God, the word of God. Uh, so we just ask that you pray for him as he goes back to Union uh, Baptist Church on today to preach in front of his people, amen, that God will continue to bless him in his endeavors. Uh, special happy birthday and anniversary birthdays to Deidre and Jason McDaniel. I know they're celebrating their wedding anniversary and their birthdays are this week, along with anyone else who is experiencing a birthday on this week. May God bless you with many, 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 many more. Amen. Also, on October the 19th, Reverend and Trusty Harad will be celebrating 57 years of marital bliss. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So as you pray for them, they'll do something special and continue to be an example to others that may follow, because some of us can't stay married for 57 minutes, 57 months, or 57 days. But they've made it for 57 years, and we're thankful to God that they're still wonderfully knit together. I'm sure every day was not a perfect sunny day, but you have to learn to endure. Amen. 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 So uh, those are the announcements for today. After the next election, we'll come back for the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. singing over yonder there will be singing over there when all of God's children get together how we gonna enjoy one another we will lay down our lives for the Lord yes we will lay down our lives for the Lord there will be singing over yonder there will be singing over there when all God's children get together how we're going to enjoy another. We will lay down our lives for the Lord. 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 Ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party. Holy Ghost party won't stop. Like the Holy Ghost party, cause the Holy Ghost party won't stop. We will lay down our lives for the Lord. Lay down my life for the Lord. I lay down my life for the Lord. Lay down my life for the Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. We ought to lay down our lives for the Lord. Amen. amen. If you have your Bibles with you and it will also appear on our screen, you can turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 14. I'll be reading for your hearing, verses 1 and verse number 11. Bit of a battle, bit of a struggle. Uh, this week, but the Lord put this upon my heart and would not let it go, so I must release it into the people of God so they may be encouraged and to encourage others as well. Amen? Amen. Proverbs number 14, chapter number 14, uh, verses 1 and verse number 11 in the 1984 NIV version 
of the Bible reads as follows. The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Shall we pray? Father our God, we thank you for this opportunity that is ours once again to expound on your most holy word. Let it be an inspiration to us, a light to our feet, Lord God. Let it be a guide to our path. This is our prayer in the mattress. Mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Just want to use a simple title this morning, Builder or Destroyer. Builder or Destroyer. They say in this life we have many choices, but when it comes to church and God and our family, it's, on, it's unfortunate we only have two. Either we're going to be for him or against him. We're going to be gatherers or scatterers. Or we're either going to be a builder or a destroyer. A builder is a person who constructs something by putting parts or material together over a period of time. It is a person or thing that creates or develops a particular thing. Now, before we get started, let me not say that men don't tear houses down and men do build up houses. Let me not say that men aren't vital parts of the home. Let me not say that men are not essential in the upbringing of children. Amen. But that's not what the text states. Not that you have to be careful that you're beating up on the woman, telling the woman she's this and she's that, she's a horrible person. No, it has two different categories in which this woman, in this particular proverb, fits into. Amen. Not to say that a father who's absent, who's not part of the household, who's weak-willed, and who can easily be run over is not a detriment and a hindrance to his family and can cause it to fall apart. But today, Scripture addresses first the wise woman. A wise woman, a prudent woman, a God-fearing woman, a God-honoring woman builds up her home. She honors her husband. She makes sure her children are well-fed and educated and well taken care of. She does not waste money, but she regards provision given to her and her family. Her household is blessed partly because of her good stewardship. Not her stewardship alone, no, not the, the, the burden lies solely on her, no, it does not, but it speaks to the fact that she is a blessing to her household to make sure things are not wasted. She speaks life into her husband and to her children. Not to say that sometimes she, will, she agrees with everything that goes on, not that she doesn't speak her mind, not that she doesn't pray about situations and circumstances, but with her mouth and with her hands, she builds up her family. They know she loves them every time they leave the home. Her husband knows he, she, he is loved. The children know that they are loved. They know that at least mama, if mama's home, everything is going to be all right. And if you really know and you grew up in a household, you know that the mom is the temperature of the home. Amen. Amen. She's the one that re resonates and regulates the thermostat because if she's happy, she's good. Everyone else can feed off of that. But if she's upset and she's angry, retreat for the exits. She's not overly negative. She doesn't diminish the contributions that her husband or her children make. She recognizes that, yes, she is a vital part, but she doesn't go around saying that if I don't do it, it can't be done. And, and if I don't straighten it out, they can't live without me. They can't do without me. Yes, sister girl, God can make a way for them to live without you. She holds true for she's true to her man and she's faithful to her family. And no, there is there is a difficulty that she might face. We know that there are hardships she might go through. But in the end, she is a jewel to her home. She's a blessing to her family. She's a blessing to those around her. And when she comes to church, she's even more blessed than she is at home because not only is she building up her home, but she realizes, recognizes the house of God needs to be built up as well. She has a duality where she manages maybe work, home, and church, and she gives equal time to, to each uh, thing in her life that requires her attention. Yes, she is vital. Yes, she's wonderful. Yes, she gets the best gifts. Yes, she's honored on Mother's Day. Yes, she gets a new ring every 10 or 15 years. Yes, she gets to go on a vacation, and yes, she gets the car she wants. 
because she's blessed and she builds up her house. Not that the kids don't need to be corrected, not that she doesn't have discussion with her husband, but man, this says she's wise, she's prudent, she's a wonderful woman, and she builds up her house. There is another side to the coin, however. A foolish woman, also a man who abandons his home and is not on his post and on his responsibility and being noncommittal, he can tear his house down, but it also says a foolish woman tears it down with her own hand. How does this woman in this proverb tear the house down with her own hands? I'm glad you asked. She wastes a provision and has no fear or regard for God. She just thinks he's just going to keep throwing blessings and throwing blessings and throwing blessings. And my nephew said this, and I thought it was funny. He said that the man will bring the money in in a wheelbarrow, and she'll scoop it out with a shovel. I got no amens on that one. All right. It's all right. She brings her home to poverty because she does not look at the blessings of God and, and treat them fairly. She is not a good steward over all that she is given. And her husband, industrious as he may be, she's only going to waste a provision with foolishness because it doesn't say she was a wise woman. It says she is a foolish woman. With her hands and with her mouth, she tears down her husband. She tears down all men. She tears down her children. Her household is worse off because of her. Now, it's quiet because we don't think we know anyone like this, do we? No, we do not. These women do not exist. They left years ago. And after the Bible was written, these people self-corrected and disappeared. Amen. That's why you don't hear any amens. They don't exist. They're destroyers. They tear their homes down and nothing is ever good enough and constant complaints and constant put downs and always overvaluing themselves and undervaluing everybody else. And with this, they tear their homes and we see it every day as, 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 as we look at the news and other places where crime and everything is rampant and fighting and everything else. And all of these things, these individuals are destroyers of their own homes. Everyone is better off because of the builders and worse off because of the destroyers. And the Bible tells us in verse number 11 that the house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. A wicked woman in charge of a household, a wicked woman in part of a house, a wicked woman or man or whoever the wicked person is, their house will be destroyed because God does not honor and prosper overly wickedness in the land. Because if that were the case, God would look at it and say, why should people obey my rules if they're going to be blessed anyway? Now, I'm not saying their houses will not be prosperous at one point or another. I'm not saying that they won't be rich. I'm not saying that they won't seem like they have it all together. But in the end, they will be destroyed. You don't want everything you accomplish and acquire on this earth to mean nothing for all of eternity. Because there will come a time where when God's judgment is exercised in the land, their home and everything they have will be destroyed because of their wicked ways. But the tent of the upright will flourish. Those who are righteous, those who honor God, those who fear God, they will flourish. Yes, they will have adversity. Yes, there will be difficult times, but their homes will flourish. So we, do we see the dichotomy here? Do we see, do we see the two sides of the coin here? There's builders and there are destroyers. Amen. Now, can we take it a step further? Okay, glad you asked. Therefore, encourage one another. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 11. How do we build each other up? Because we do not want to be the destroyer. How do we build each other up? Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as, in fact, you are doing. This is Paul's letter to the church of Thessalonica, and he tells them and us as well that we as a church are to encourage one another and build each other up. 
Should have got more amens on that one, but that's okay. We need to build each other up. But pastor, what if they're not doing what they're supposed to do? You encourage them to do what they're supposed to do. But what if they're doing this and what if they're doing that? And we're in a culture where we always think of the negative instead of the positive. Build one another up. Encourage one another to keep on preaching, keep on praying, keep on serving, keep on trying to obey the word of God. And any time you notice a weakness, you go with them and you encourage them to give it to God and he will work it out. Build each other up. Amen. We can easily tear each other down with our words and tear each other down with how we speak to each other. And we always say, like, I got to tell it like it is. But how do you tell it like it is? Amen. Oh, I got to tell you like it is. I can't tolerate no foolishness. But how do you show you don't tolerate foolishness? Is it with a nasty attitude? An evil demeanor? Is it with loud cursing? Is it with chastisement? Is it appearance that you are great and everyone else is beneath you? How do you tell it like it is? And are the people better off once you tell them or are they worse off? And are they going to hide from you when they see you coming? Somebody ought to say amen right up in there. All right. How do we give support and advice to someone so that they will continue to be built up? That's what it means to encourage someone. That's what it means uh, to strengthen them, to make them stronger and more intense. We do this for each other, just like, as the Bible said, we are supposed to be doing even now. Building each other up. The world will tear you down. Every day you hear what you're not. If you're on social media, you'll hear what you're not. Amen? Can I give you a little example? As an African-American man, we don't build, we don't create, we don't do anything. We're not good fathers. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. If you listen to enough of this rhetoric, you'll start to feel depressed because you'll see everything you're not, but none of what you really are. What do you do that's right? You hear everything that you do is wrong. So when you come to the house of God, you should be built up because or your own home, because at least in your own home, you have some sort of value. Who wants to come home from work and hear this ain't this and this and that third. You ain't this and you ain't that. You didn't do this. and You didn't do that. And you're sorry. So and so. And you should have just stayed at work. And no one wants you here. You're sorry. You're lazy. You're this. You're who wants to hear that all the time. And that's why people don't come home. Find a part time job, find a second shift, find some overtime, recheck your work seven or eight times just so you don't have to be around people who will tear you down. When you see their number show up in your cell phone, what's the first thing you do? Send it to voicemail. And they call you again, send it to voicemail. And they call you again. Send it to voicemail. And when you finally answer the phone, you have to listen to yourself being torn down. But when you come to your own home and the house of God, you should at least know you're going to get some encouragement and be built up. So yet, we need to encourage each other as believers, to be a better worshiper, to be a better servant of God, to follow God more, to be a better husband, better wife, better mother, better father, better sister, better brother, better daughter, better son. Be encouraged to be all of those things. And no, you're not going to get it right all the time. And yes, sometimes they have to tell you, you know what, you might want to do this, you might want to do that, you might want to do that. And your presentation is determined or will determine whether what you say is received or thrown away. Amen. Amen. Since your anniversary is coming up, this is my gift to you. I could look at him and say, Herman, I don't know how you do it, brother. Boy, mm, mm. I'm going to be praying for you, brother. Mm, mm. Lord, oh, have mercy on your soul, brother. I could look at her and say, I don't know how you tolerate him. You should have left him 75 years ago. I went with him 74. You should have never dated him in the first place. Now, she's got to go home and deal with that. And the next time they have a disagreement, the first thing she will say is, Pastor told me I should have left you 57 years ago. (laughs) 
Well, I ain't going back to Craig no more. See how he like that. You see how that tears them down? And who will have to be accountable for that on the day of judgment? Me. You guys are doing a great job. You're a great example. How did you do it? Please explain it to us because I know people I had to do marital counseling for, they be getting 57 minutes and already having fights already. How do you do it? God bless the two of you for 57 years. I'll be praying for you. You are an example to everybody. Which one is better for them? Now they can go out and minister and encourage and they feel good about themselves. You know what? And on the day of judgment, what will I get for what I said to them? A commendation instead of a criticism. Because I try to build them up instead of destroying them and tearing them down. Be a better Christian and a follower of Christ is what it is to be built up. And sometimes when the scripture convicts us, it doesn't convict us to tear us down. It convicts us to build us up. That we understand what God's righteous requirements are. And as we strive to do them, we strive to do them by building each other up. Even when we fall and even when we stumble and even when we make a mistake and even when we show a weakness and even when we're absent and even when we're not here, we're supposed to try our best to build each other up. Amen. Don't let that gazelle run by itself. Don't let that deer Run by themselves. Please come into the fellowship. Don't 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 go out there and run by yourself because there is a person called the devil and he goes about like a what? Roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And if you watch National Geographic once, you know that they always get the one that runs by itself. A pack of lions, a pack of hyenas. And all you see is them eating one animal by itself. I never seen a feast on six or seven of them. They always catch one. And it's always the one that's either not paying attention or is by itself. Amen, somebody. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 24. Because we know we're supposed to encourage and build one another up. And it says here, and let us consider how we might spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Push each other toward love and good deeds. Build each other up so we're moving toward loving each other and having good deeds. Encouraging one another daily, building each other up in the faith in spite of all of our weaknesses, all of our weaknesses, all of our weaknesses, all of our weaknesses. You mean to tell me people in church have weaknesses? No, no, not not the church. Everybody in the church is perfect, aren't they? People in church have weaknesses. Why didn't you tell me? I thought I was the only one that had an issue in traffic sometimes. I thought I was the only one that get angry at people on their cell phones that cut you off. I thought I was the only one who needed prayer for that. I'm not. Happened this morning on the way to church. Girl phone under her chin. Went right into the circle without even looking. And here we are trying to do right and obey traffic. And she just blend right in and keep going. Pray for her. She wasn't paying attention. Not only till we encourage one another daily, but help each other love God and man more. Love God and each other more. Love God and each other more. Forgive one another and help one another so there won't be any disharmony in the fellowship. Build each other up so there's no conflict amongst the brothers. Spur one another on toward loving God. Push one another. Encourage one another. Push one another. Force one another. Encourage one another. Put, build each other up so we all love God and man more every day. And also do good deeds. The word of God, and I'm almost done, commands us to build each other up. But the opposite can also occur. Where there is a positive there is a negative. Where there are heads, there is tails. And where there are builders, there'll be destroyers. And the difficulty in writing this sermon was because you really had to 
to, 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 you know, talk about the women. Oh, you be, be, I'm not, not beating up on a woman. I'm just citing the scripture because, as you know, a husband and a wife, either one can tear the house down with their mouths and with their hands, with these. And everything that we do with these are what we present to God on the day of judgment for punishment or reward or no reward at all. The church of the living God, because if we're builders or destroyers, we can destroy a fellowship or we can build up a fellowship. We can destroy a choir or we can just build up a choir. We can build up a ministry or we can destroy a ministry. Now, let me tell you something that's interesting about this. The church of the living God is safe because he said even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You can't destroy the church universal. But you can ruin a fellowship local. I say that one more time. Okay. You can't destroy the church universal because God's not going to let you do that. He will move you out the way. He will make you sick. He will put you in intensive care. He will do whatever he has to do. You will not destroy the church universal. Bad pastors and bad members will never be able to prevail against the church universal but you can destroy the church local. You understand that? You can damage the local fellowship, but you'll never harm the church at large. So why are you telling people to be builders and not destroyers in their own home, Pastor? Because just like a glass with too much water in it, it spills over. If you're a destroyer, you're not only going to destroy your home, You're going to destroy work environments and you're going to destroy fellowships. If you're a discourager and an overly negative person, and if you're a person that just can't see things go right without you causing conflicts in it. If you're the only Judas of the 12. You're the destroyer. If you're the tear and not the wheat, you're a destroyer. If you're the thorn and not the rose, you're a destroyer. If you tear down your own home, which you are every day, why would you ever value the fellowship of the living God? You won't. So today's lesson is go home and look at your activities and look at your attitudes and look at what you're doing and say, Lord, I can't believe I'm a destroyer. I can't believe I'm damaging my own place. Help me be better that I may build up the people of God and not tear them down. Don't we get enough from the world as a house of hypocrites? People who say one thing and do another, who nap and sleep and don't ever listen to the word of God and can't open. And matter of fact, they don't even read the word of God. So how are they going to have a positive influence on the people of God? How are you going to build people up when you tear your own self down? When you look in the mirror and say what you're not and how stupid you are and how dumb you are. If you tear your own self down, what are you going to do to other people? If you don't even love yourself enough to encourage yourself. And if you tear your own spouse down, whether God chose them or you chose them. And even if it don't work out, let them go and still love them and treat them nice and encourage them. Because you were part of the problem as well. Did I say that out loud? (laughs) I meant to think it. If you're going to tear down your own children, How are you going to treat the children in Sunday school? Because if you do build up the children in Sunday school, your children are going to wonder why you tear them down and build up these other people, children who you're not even giving birth to. Be a builder. Be a builder. Encourage yourself every morning when you get up. 
This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I was fearfully and wonderful made. Yes, I messed up yesterday, but today is a brand new day, Lord. And if today is going to be an awesome day for me, no matter what happens, you have equipped me and given me everything I need to succeed and be blessed for this day. And if it is my last day, I will rest with you. Go about doing the same thing for your family. I don't say they won't never need to be checked and corrected and you won't never have to do this and do that and tell them how it is, but make sure they know you love them as well. So when you come to the house of God, you have your brick and your mortar and hay. I'm a builder. So leave your TNT, your handguns, your C4 explosives. Amen. C4 is a plastic explosive your dynamite, your firecrackers, your Wiley Coyote Acme destruction kit, leave them at home. Matter of fact, put it in the backyard and destroy it. Lose the launch codes, get rid of the missiles, put that F-16 in an in a aircraft graveyard, get rid of your tank, your rocket launcher, your AK-47, your AR-15s, your 9 millimeter handguns, your 38 snub nose revolver, your dual action 45, 44 Magnum. Leave all those things at home. And be a builder. And not a destroyer. Because in the end, the builders get rewarded and they flourish. And the destroyers are destroyed. Which one will you be? God bless you. <clears throat> As we stand all over the church, this is my invitation to, to you and to everyone. Our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, our Messiah, our Savior, our King, he came and died for the sins of many. And he was a builder. He built up his fellow man in faith. He corrected his, his fellow man only to help him, not to hurt them. But the next time he comes back, he's coming back to take his own. And when he comes back to judge, he will reward the builders who know him, who are called according to his purpose, who follow him. But those who were destroyers, who destroyed people and destroyed their own lives, they will also themselves be destroyed. And the only way to avoid being a destroyer and the only way to, get a, to avoid getting a negative, a negative judgment is to know Jesus Christ. As I said it last week, it's almost like this great event, this great cookout, this great graduation feast that you're going to go to. And all those who know God through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ will be at the door and say, come on in. I know him. Yes, I know her. <clears throat> but if you didn't get to know him while you were alive, he won't know you on that day. And you'll be relegated to a place where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, where there'll only be an eternity of regret instead of an eternity of happiness and joy. You only have two choices, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or rejecting him and going your own way. And the only bad thing about going your own way, you're not smart enough to go your own way. You're not wise enough. There's no books that will tell you how to go your own way and actually be successful on the day of judgment. But this book called the Bible tells you how to be successfully and successfully know God and to spend eternity with him. If that's you, simple solution. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ at this moment to come into your heart and save you. Make you new. Lord, come into my heart. Say that with me. Lord, come into my heart. Save me. Transform me. Make me who you desire for me to be. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. And I confess my sin to you. And I repent of these things that I've done. And Lord God, help me live for you forevermore. You're on your way. God bless you. Let us pray.
Father, we thank you for this opportunity that is ours once again. We thank you so much for your loving kindness, your tender mercy, and the awesomeness of your grace. At this moment, this hour, and at this time, we just want you to forgive us for being a destroyer if we ever been one. Forgive us for tearing people down. Forgive us for not encouraging them. Forgive us for hurting their hearts. Forgive us for being that mean-spirited individual that did not help the fellowship, but destroyed the fellowship. Forgive us now, even though we have breath in our body to turn things around. Grant us the time, the grace and the mercy to reverse the course and be a builder from now on and not a destroyer. God, there are people among us who have suffered loss of loved ones. There are people among us who are hurting. They need to be built up. They need the encouragement. They need someone to show them some love. Let that begin with us, God. At this time and this hour, help us comfort one another. Help us encourage one another. Help us trust one another. Help us lean and depend on one another. And even when we're let down, we're only let down because we're human. But we know, God, you will never let us down. But help us to try our best not to let each other down. Help us not to be a discouraging word, but an encouraging word. Help us to love one another. Help us to forgive one another. Help us to begin to repair the damage that church people have caused in our past. Help us to love one another, Lord God, like we've never loved each other before. Help us to love you like we never loved you before. Help us to follow you like we never followed you before. Help us, Lord God, be the people you desire for us to be. You're a soon coming king, and we want to make sure people know about you. You're a wonderful God, and we want to make sure people know about you. You're a loving, kind God, and we want to make sure everybody knows about you. And as you died for us, help us die to ourselves as we begin to live for you. Help us to mature each and every day that we might be more like you and less like ourselves. Help us fight the good fight of faith, Lord God. Where we're weak, help our members and our fellowship members help build us up. And where they're weak, we'll help them. And when we're weak, they will help us be all that you want for us to be. This is our prayer in the matchless mighty name of Jesus, who's the Holy Christ. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you. We thank you for revival. We thank you for commitment. And we thank you, Lord God, for the bricks you're going to give us to build one another up. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. You are to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Feel your hopes on. Amen. This is our communion Sunday. So as you receive your sacraments, we're going to uh, recite our church covenant together. stand for the reading of our covenant.
having come together for the purpose of worshiping God and having accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we enter now into the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We believe that we are all one in the body of Christ, and we further believe that we have been given gifts one to another according to the desires of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we are to use our gifts to the glory of God and for the betterment of mankind. We are to refrain from being jealous of the gifts of others, but to strive to maximize the gifts that God has given to, you, given to each one of us. Refrain from gossiping about one another and strive to discourage the discussion of others in a negative manner. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, and to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worships, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines. We further strive to contribute cheerfully and regularly to support of the ministry the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spreading of the gospel through all nations. We also engage in maintaining private and family devotions to religiously educate our children and to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. Right in the world, always striving to emulate the deeds of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We promise to be just in all of our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment. We will further strive to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress. Finally, we will strive to live our lives in such a way that others may see Christ in us. You may be seated. On the night before our Lord and Savior was crucified, he shared a Passover meal with his disciples. And there he took the bread and broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Take ye and eat all of it. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, said, This is my blood poured out for the new covenant. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Craig Moore has an open communion policy to all baptized believers. But before we receive this sacrament, this commemoration of his body and shed blood, we must first examine ourselves to see if we're holding any grudges, any unconfessed sin, any grievances against anyone else. So at the time of prayer, we will ask God to forgive us, and he is just and faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for who you are and all that you've done. Thank you, Lord God, for being a forgiving God and a just God. We thank you so much, God, because you know your children are going to make mistakes on a regular basis. You know your children are on a pathway for growth and development and pursuing of holiness. But along the way, there is a sinful nature. There is times where we give over to our flesh and not to the spirit. So in those times, in these occasions, in these occurrences, God, we're asking you today to please forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God, for anything we thought, did, or said, that if we didn't do something, forgive us. And if we did do it and should not have done it, please forgive us. Forgive us for those wayward thoughts. Forgive us for the angry attitudes. Forgive us, Lord God, for being unforgiving to other people. But help us, Lord God, forgive others as you forgive us. Because you made us a promise and your word is always true. If we hold sin against others, you will not forgive the sin that we committed against you. So we ask you, Father God, to please forgive us for our sins. Help us release others and forgive them for their sins as well. And help us to love them and treat them with kindness, even though they have offended us in one way or another. Lord God, cast our sins in the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more. Lord God, let them be as far as the east is from the west, so they will never be attached to us again. And help us to live the life you desire for us to live. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me make 
make sure I separate the two. Okay, there we go. All right. Oops. Okay. We hold in our hands the symbol of his body and shed blood. Let us break bread and eat together. Let us drink the cup. And they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Shall we all stand? You may go in peace. God bless you. <laughs>